Let's get right back into it with Introduction to Post-Processing, Part 2. Now we're getting to the more complex stuff. This is the image that I had initially. And again, pretty flat, not very dynamic, not very punchy. Again, you might say, why not just apply global adjustments and be done with it? Well, I think this is a pretty decent image and it just, in my opinion, deserves a little more work on it. But I have in fact created a version uh, which I achieved just with a global adjustment and here it is. And you can see that it looks pretty different. That's the before, that's the after, definitely more dramatic. But uh, to me personally, it just looks a tiny bit flat. I personally feel that that whole interplay of light and dark is really important and we're sort of losing some of that uh, right around here. You see that everything is becoming uh, quite a bit brighter and uh, you know what I'd like to do is I'd like to make this whole area stand out more. I just think that I can do better and I have in fact uh, created the final version that I'm actually happy with and that's this version right here. So let's just compare the two to give you a nice idea of the differences. So this is the preferred version. This is the one, the quick one, achieved with global adjustments. The preferred version and the quick one. And again, let's go to the preferred version. So note that right here, we've got this whole area looking really bright. And I sort of felt like, wow, this is what really drew me to the scene in the first place, that there was just this patch that was really, really bright uh, and this ray of light and these, uh, you know, sort of dramatic clouds, this road leading my eye towards there. It's these really small details sometimes that make a difference. So what did I do here? Well, here we're going to deconstruct the image. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is have a look at what I did with a radial filter. And you can see all these little pins right here. Uh, they represent what I did. So I'm gonna click that. First of all, I worked on the sky. You see that I brought the exposure down all the way to uh, minus 0.87. If I delete that, you can see the difference. I'm going to bring it back and it's sort of a before and after. Next, I'm going to go and show you what I did right here. You see I've further darkened these clouds because I thought that there was really quite a bit of drama happening around here and I've even increased the clarity a little bit just to make these clouds pop. So I'm gonna delete this and I'm gonna bring it back. Not a huge difference, but again, it's the little subtle things that ultimately uh, play a large part in making images really work. Next, I'm gonna go right here and so if I actually delete that, you can see that this area here is looking a little bit overexposed. We're losing a lot of detail. And that's the reason why I actually uh, brought down the value in the highlights right here. Also, the light beam became a little bit more pronounced as I did this. So again, I'm gonna delete it and I'm gonna bring it back. The next thing is this pin right here, which is responsible for the brightening of this whole patch of grass, which, which is, what I said really attracted me to the scene. It's also responsible for this ridge to stand out a little bit more against the mountain backdrop. So you can see I've increased the exposure and I've increased the clarity quite significantly. Now I'm gonna delete the pin and you can see what a big, big difference it makes. Last is this rock right here. It's not hugely important, but if I delete this oval, you can see that there's a little bit of a difference. So exposure and clarity were adjusted here. The next thing that I did was use the adjustment brush and I'm going to show you where I used it. First of all, I wanted to make the light beam even more pronounced. So you can see I painted right around here, increasing the value in the clarity slider. Let's delete that and bring it back. And I'll actually just zoom in a little bit to show you the difference better before and after. Next was the road and you can see I painted right around there. I made it a little bit brighter with an increase in exposure and I made it pop a little bit with the increase in clarity. This is what it looked like before. This is what it looks like now. Next is this whole area around here. I just wanted to give the, the landscape a little bit more texture. So what I did was increase the clarity. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually just reset that. And you can see that just an increase in clarity 
really, you know, gave it a bit more pop, gave it a bit more texture. And last, I adjusted this area right here. You can see that I really increased the number in the clarity slider. And again, if I reset that, you can see what a huge difference that makes. So with the increase in clarity, I just really make this area come out a bit more. Essentially by making certain elements pop, I'm adding a sense of volume. I'm making the image look a little bit more three-dimensional, a little bit more like you can sort of jump into it. So let me just exit the adjustment brush and again, compare my preferred version to the quick version. And now my preferred version with the untouched version right out of the camera. You can see that that is a huge difference. It took me a little bit longer to get it right and sometimes uh, the real sort of time killer is the fact that you're experimenting, you're seeing what works, you might apply something and then you might just get rid of that effect. So that's really the main thing that sometimes takes a lot of your time. But with experience, you really get quite good at this and you really sort of know, almost like a doctor, you know what a patient needs, you, you know what an image uh, needs from you in order to look the best that it possibly can or in order to really represent what you saw with your eye and your mind. Again, before and after. Here's another image which I consider a bit more complex to work with. Now, when I say complex, I don't mean that it's really rocket science or anything like that. This whole idea of brightening and darkening parts of the image, you know, essentially dodging and burning, but in ways which are perhaps more neat, uh, more effective, quicker, uh, this whole idea is really the backbone of what we're doing in post-processing. Obviously, along with the adjustment of the camera profile to get the colors just as you want them to look and so on. So here's the image the way that it came out of the camera and here's the after image. You can see that I used camera portrait profile, not just because it's a portrait, but you know that's basically the one that looked best in my opinion. And then as far as global adjustments, I adjusted the contrast and I adjusted the exposure just a tiny bit because I felt that the image was slightly overexposed. And then came the local adjustments. So let's have a look at the radial filter. I'm gonna click it, I drew an oval, I increased the exposure a little bit in the face. Now, the reason why I just decreased the overall exposure and then increased the exposure in the face is because I want the background to look darker and I want the face to pop. So exposure up, clarity up as well. But as you'll see later, I actually adjusted the clarity in a bit more detail as well with the adjustment brush. Now, you might at this point ask me, why are you using the radial filter over the adjustment brush? And my answer to that is that uh, in some cases, it's just a little bit neater. Uh, you know, with the adjustment brush, it's quite easy to get messy. It's quite easy to, to leave traces of where you've actually adjusted uh, the photograph, where you've actually done your dodging and burning. So I really like the radial filter for this reason in particular. The fact that you can just make things look much more neat and really much less noticeable. So let me just delete this and undo the delete. And again, delete, that's the before, that's the after. Another important thing that I did, which the radial filter is also really good for, is to darken a certain part of the image if you don't want attention drawn to it. So I'm actually gonna delete this pin right here. You can see that this whole part of the image is rather bright and so it sort of attracts unnecessary attention to this area and I really don't need that. So that's why I drew an oval here and brought the exposure down all the way to minus 1.88. Now note something very important. I have increased the feather value here and that is in order to make this whole transition a little bit smoother. You can see that if I decrease the value of the feather, the transition is just a little bit less smooth. And that's also another reason why I like the radial filter is that you can make the transition very smooth and again, uh, almost unnoticeable. Next, we're gonna look at the adjustment brush changes. And uh, I'm gonna begin right here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this is the area that I adjusted and I simply increased the exposure right here. I'm gonna reset that and you can see that this whole area around the eyelids just becomes a little bit brighter. Next is this part right here, the eyes, the brightening of the eyes, a pretty standard typical thing. If I reset that, you can see that the eyes are just not quite as bright. Again, I didn't wanna overdo it, so 
I was quite careful with how I uh, increased the value in this particular slider here. Now I played around with the clarity and you can see it's quite a large area and if I reset that it makes a bit of a difference. You can see that his wrinkles, the, the sort of the outlines of his eyes stand out quite a bit more after I've increased the clarity. Let's just see it once again before and after. And I did the same thing with a beard. You see that the red is where I painted and if I reset clarity that's how it was before and that's how it is after. This one is not quite as noticeable as the wrinkles but it still makes a heck of a difference uh, when you look at the image overall. So I'm just going to zoom out and have a final look at the before and the after. Before and after. Here's the final image and I actually wrote a blog post about it on the iVoyage blog about how I achieved this result and I actually want to go through it in real time just because I think it is a pretty interesting situation. You see that there's quite a harsh contrast between this area and this area right here so it presents an interesting challenge. Now I might not necessarily process it in the way that I did on the blog and that really doesn't matter because the end result is going to be more or less the same. There's not necessarily a right or wrong approach uh, they're all sort of similar to each other, but uh, anyway, let's get to it. So the first thing is I'm going to choose camera portrait, going to go back up and I'm going to use the radial filter. What I'll do is I'll draw a circle right here. I'm going to decrease the value of the highlights because I want some more detail in the sky. I'm going to decrease the value in exposure, but I'm going to increase the value in the shadows because I don't want to completely lose all the detail in the shadows. So there I'm getting a little bit closer to a more evenly exposed image. Next I'm going to go right here and I'm actually going to increase the exposure in order to brighten the area where these boys are and I'm going to increase the value of the shadow slider as well. Now I'm going to exit the radial filter and that's a pretty evenly exposed image, but now I want these boys, faces, uh, the hands, the shoes, this broom, and maybe the puddle to pop out a little bit. And in this case, I'm actually going to use the adjustment brush. So I'm going to increase the clarity to about plus 32. I'm going to increase the size of the adjustment brush. I'm going to paint right here, right here, right here. Then the shoes, the broom, and the puddle, just like that. I might actually even paint a little right here as well. And there we go. An image with a very limited dynamic range a very bright sky on the verge of really being blown out to a much more balanced image which is pretty punchy and dynamic. So again before and after, before and after. And that's it, that concludes our video. If you've enjoyed this video and have learned something from it, You'll most definitely love iVoyager's newest learning tool, Understanding Post Processing. You get 10 raw images and 10 video tutorials with plenty of explanations, techniques and additional examples. I believe it's the absolute most powerful and practical way to learn. You follow along with what I do on the screen and try everything out for yourself. To learn more about Understanding Post Processing, simply click the link on the screen. Thanks for watching.